Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for your words. I thank you, Lord, for using me. I pray that everyone in the sound of my voice this morning will be blessed. And that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable before your sight. To pray in your name. Amen. Yes, a form of godliness revealed. I don't know if any, any of you ever thought about being in the presence of Jesus. If you were to be in the presence of Jesus, you're walking with him as his disciples and others were, in the, were walking with him. What are some of the thoughts that would have come to your mind? I'm sure we'd have questions we'd have to ask him. Maybe some of you would ask the same questions I, I would ask. I'm sure some would be different. Some of us would just want to stay with him all day and just listen to him speak. I would like to be there with him, even just to see him, just to see his face. Like the woman with the, with the issue of blood, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. She didn't even just want to be there, just want to be able to touch the hem of his garment. She knew that she would be made whole. Likewise, myself, I knew uh, a few months ago, I, uh, I was making trips back and forth to Jamaica, back and forth. And uh, my wife was just sick with a demon called, called cancer. Every time I think about it, it's, she was weighing about 150 pounds, and I see her lost weight down to about 80 pounds. And there's nothing I can do to help her. I would sit by her bedside, I would go there and I kiss her and I say, I love you, but no, that cannot help her. And I watched that demon suck her life out. And I couldn't do nothing. It just tears me apart. Could not do nothing to help her. But I just give God thanks for strength as uh, we go through times like these. In the 12th chapter of Luke, the story is told of a man who happened to be in the company of Jesus. He had the opportunity to walk with Jesus, to talk with him, to sup with him. And he had a question for Jesus. He had a question. So today I'm going to contrast two examples of two individuals who had opportunity to be in the presence of Jesus. And to see how each of these individuals responded. Likewise, each of us have our own questions for him. So turn with me to Luke 12, verse 13 through 15. We'll look at the first example here. Verse 13 to 15 says, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Jesus said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed it. Can you imagine having the opportunity to be with Jesus? And all I can think about is my inheritance. Are you, are you here in the church? This man happened to be in the company of Jesus. And what he was thinking about, that he should speak to his brother. That he divide his inheritance with him. It can't get any worse than that. It can't get any worse. Jesus, the creator of this world, and I'm here with him, 
And the only thing that come to my mind is what my parent died and leave for me that to, to come and make peace with me and my brother. It so happened that at this stage of Jesus' ministry, it was coming close to an end. Jesus didn't have much time to waste on uh, stupid things like a man's inheritance. He had been speaking to his disciples about publishing the truth that he has committed to them. Time was running out on him. Jesus knew that for his sake, his disciples would be brought before magistrates, kings, and rulers. Some of them would be imprisoned and put to death for accepting new truth. And here is this man coming to him to tell him to speak to his brother about inheritance. Christ always speaks the truth in pure light. They heard words of wisdom from him. And yet, there were some people in the crowd who were there for their own selfish ambition. They were not there because they want to hear new truth. They were not there because they want to be Christ. They were there because they have selfish ambition. We need to let Jesus take full control of our lives. Our lives ought to be in harmony with him. In verse 13, as we look at verse 13 where it says, one man in the crowd. He says here, and one in his company said to him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide my inheritance. Jesus already knew that Moses had given them uh, the laws according to inheritance. In Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 17, it clearly states that the eldest brother should be given a double portion of inheritance. This young man knew that he was not entitled to a double portion of that inheritance, but he became covetous. He covet his own brother. He was not happy with what he was getting. He thought his older brother had defrauded him. So he wanted to make things straight with Jesus. Although he had the opportunity to be there in the crowd with Jesus, his, the spiritual truth was not accepted by this young man's heart. Can you imagine being there with Jesus? And yet he could not accept the truth. Rather, his mission was to further his own ambitions. The gain of inheritance was what preoccupied his mind. The truth of the world was far as the east is from the west from him. Can you imagine that? In our hearts, brothers and sisters, we are to draw closer and closer to Jesus. Let not be preoccupied by the things of this world. They are just temporal. Are you hearing me, church? They are just temporal. These things were written in this Bible as examples for us to follow. That when we see situations like these, we know that's not how God wants us to live. Yeah, that's not how God wants us to live. Jesus, the king of glory, he was rich. 
yet he became poor for you and I's sake. He was rich. He became poor. And he was opening the churches of heaven, heaven's divine love to this young man. The Holy Spirit was pleading with him to become part of an incorruptible inheritance. He could not see it. He could not see it. His eyes were so fixated on the temporal, the corruptible inheritance that he could not see what Jesus had to offer him. So even when he got to Jesus, his mind could not change. We need to ask Jesus to live in our hearts. Live in us. Daily. That our lives reflect Jesus Christ. In everything that we do, one should see Christ in us. Should see Christ in us. That's how we are to live our, our lives. During this, this time, this moment of Jesus' mission on earth, it was fast coming to an end. No time was there for him to be, the, not much time was there for him to complete the work that he was sent to do. The work of um, establishing the kingdom of grace. Taking on a job as a divider was not part of his mission. In other words, Satan was using every method possible to distract Christ from his mission. So the devil was working through this young man as a distraction. And he can work through you and I just the same. If we allow him to, he will come in and distract us so that we don't even think that there is a God. Don't even think about it. I knew I was, I was raised in Jamaica and I was raised among uh, my siblings. And it was five of us. And right now, I, uh, of the five of us, I'm the only one still probably in the church. I know my younger brother, he would, if I talk to him about God, he doesn't want to hear it. Yet we all were born and raised seven years in this. And every one of them are just about doing their own things. Yet God, God had me for a purpose. So I'm the only one remaining and, and thank God I try to minister to them. My own sisters and brothers. Right now, today, Sabbath, I'm the only one in church. If I call my brother, he's in Chicago, plumbing contract, he's out there doing something. Somewhere he tells me what he's doing here now. Tonight he'll be somewhere in Chicago at some of those clubs. And that's how his life is. But we praise God for Jesus. We praise God for his blessings. In verse 14, Jesus asks him a simple, simple question. He says here, man who made me a divider, who made me a judge or a divider over you. I like how Jesus just goes straight to the point. In verse 15, he continues saying that take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesses. All these things that we possess are just temporal. They will not last forever. Salvation lasts forever. Christ saw this man's thought and knew that he was unhappy with his portion of his inheritance because he coveted his brother for his portion. Christ's treatment of material position are temporal, but salvation lasts forever. Our duty is to preach God's end-time message 
Go out and minister to the needs. Feed hunger. Help provide shelter for those who are homeless. As a people of God who believe in the second advent of Christ, our thoughts and actions should reflect Jesus Christ. And our focus on material things and inheritance should be second place in our lives. I realize that, you know, if you want to see the real demon come out of some people, you wait until somebody die. And then it's time to distribute inheritance. You see the real demon. Some family members don't speak to each other for life because they felt that they were defrauded. In verse 16 of the same chapter, Christ continued by telling the story of a rich man who had an abundance of food. So turn me to verse 16, 16 to 21 of the same chapter. Verse 16 continues saying, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. He thought with himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. And he said, I will do, this is what I will do. I will pull down my barn and I will build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. I will say to my soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. This rich man demonstrated the folly of those of us who are consumed by material things. That we cannot even think clearly. He received everything from God, yet he didn't even realize it. He received the rain, he received the sunshine, he received the health, he received strength, his vegetation, vegetation flourished and brought forth abundantly. He was now confused as to what he should do with his abundance. His barn was full to overflowing. He wondered, what should I do with the abundance of, the, of my vegetation? So he came up with a plan that he thought was the wisest plan. The barn he has was not big enough. So I'm going to tear it down. And I'm going to build me a bigger barn. And then I will be able to store all my goods. And then I will be able to get down in my recliner, sit back, relax, eat, and be merry. But in his ignorance, God looked down on him and said, Thou fool, tonight thy soul shall be required of thee. This is a good example of somebody who is just selfish. Thinking all about himself. No thought for any, anyone else. All about him. Himself. But the Bible tells me that it's better to give than to receive. It's better to give than receive. Rather than being selfish, we should be generous and selfless. We should be seeking God's wisdom 
And how we should bless others. Rather than thinking about how we should build our barns bigger. Everything that we do, we should be seeking God. For his guidance. And he will guide us. He will lead us. The Lord hears the prayer of the needy. When they pray, God hears their prayer. In Psalm 68, verse 10, the word of the Lord states, Of the goodness of God, prepare, God prepare for the poor and the needy. Out of his goodness. God had blessed the selfish man abundantly so that he could share with the poor. Rather, all he think about was himself. There were charities out there that he could have, he could have donated a lot of stuff to. He himself could have been there going house to house and, and taking care of the, the sick and the widow, the homeless and the fatherless. Rather than just thinking about himself. The kingdom of heaven is nigh. We are not to set it for temporal things, brothers and sisters. Because we know one thing is sure that God is coming. Rather, we should seek to find and find and to, to save souls for Christ's kingdom. The only remedy for sin and sorrow is to have Jesus in our lives. The injustice that we see go toward the poor like this rich man had just done earlier was selfish, caused by selfishness and greed. And selfishness and greed can only be eradicated by submitting ourselves to Christ and Him alone. In 1 John 1 verse 9, the word of the Lord states that we should confess our sins. And if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us. And he does not only forgive us, but he cleanses us from our unrighteousness. That's the God we serve. Trust in him. Jesus had got to the root of the problem this young man had asked him to solve. Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's heart consisted not in the abundance of the things that we possess. For this rich young man, his possession was his all. <clears throat> he did not take into, uh, into life like that Jesus was the one in control of everything. He did not even think that he thought he was the only person existing. He did not realize that God give it and he take it. He allowed the sun to shine on the, the good and also on the evil. God is not partial. He thought after he tore down his barn and built a bigger barn, he would just sit back and relax, eat and drink for many years. But God looked at him and said, you are a fool. Tonight will be your last night. The lesson for us today is that we are just temporary stewards of the things that we possess. We're all just temporary stewards. We should not be consumed by the things we possess. Don't let these material things consume our minds that we cannot even think that God gave them to us and they are just temporary. As the word of the Lord states that his barn was full to the, to the capacity and his only thought was that I'm going to tear it down and I'm going to build a bigger barn. Sometimes what we need to do is to make it smaller. Make our barn smaller. Give away stuff. There are a lot of people out there who need it. 
rather than storing everything up until you get to the high, to the, to the top. Start, start figuring out how, which charity can I give something to? Who can I help out there? There must be somebody I can help. In Psalm 41 and verse, Psalm 14, verse 1, the word of the Lord says that the fool said in his heart that there is no God. But you and I know that we serve a God that reigns forever and ever. Now in, in Mark chapter 46, chapter 10 and verse uh, 46 to 52, Bear with me here as I get there. Mark 10, 46 to 52. We are going to take a few minutes and look at an example of another man who had the opportunity to be in the presence of Jesus and to see how he responded. Mark 10, verse 46 to 52. Word of the Lord says, <clears throat> And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out saying, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. Many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, the son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he called thee. And he cast in away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. What an example. Blind Bartimaeus was there by the wayside begging. He was blind. He could not see Jesus. But when the crowd was coming and he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he started shouting, Jesus. Son of David, have mercy upon me. And many of the hypocrites in the, in the crowd started to tell him, hold your peace. Stop shouting. We don't want you to speak to Jesus. The word of the Lord said, the more they tell him to stop the shouting, is him, the louder he got. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. The crowd was large. They were making a lot of noise. But Jesus heard that one voice. That one voice shouting, Son of David, have mercy on me. And he stood still, the word of the Lord said. Jesus stood still. And he commanded that they bring that blind man to him. So they brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him. He could not see Jesus, but Jesus looked at him and he said, What is it that you want of me today? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. He could have asked for all kind of stuff, but he wanted two things from Jesus. He wanted to be able to see Jesus, and the next thing he wanted to do in verse 52 was to follow Jesus. Jesus told him that he should go his way. His faith has made him whole. And verse 52 it says, and he and immediately he received his sight and he followed Christ. That's what we need in our lives. We need to open our eyes 
and see Jesus. And not just see him, but we need to follow him and let Jesus lead us day by day. Let him be the cornerstone of our lives. Let him direct our lives. Like Bartimaeus, we need to be a Bartimaeus every day. Wake in the morning and call on Jesus, O son of David. Have mercy on us because we are all sinners. Falling from grace. We all need Jesus in our lives. Without him, we can do nothing. There's a song that says, without him, I can do nothing. We are all fully lost without Christ. So, my prayer for us today is that we be like Bartimaeus. Call on Christ daily to have mercy upon us. Acknowledging our fault that we are all sinners and fall short of his glory. And ask him to lead our lives. And he will. Thank you for hearing today. May God bless you.